My name is David Vitao, and this is Always Be Coding. Today's post is all about how best to prepare to crush almost any programming interview. This is actually based on a post that I wrote about five years ago. Uh, I was working at Square at the time. I had worked at Google for about five years, and I was in the video game industry for about five years as well. Uh, but let me back up for a second. I'm a self-taught programmer. I left college when I was 19. I did start computer science at Purdue for about a semester and a half. I basically left once I got a job offer. I moved out from Chicago to Southern California, and that's where my career began. And so since then, I mentioned I worked, I did get a job at Google. I, without a degree, that was quite rare back in 2007. Um, I was there for five years. Then I went on to join Square. Uh, I started a company called Secret. That's a whole other story. I had another company that I started um, that was acquired by Postmates. I worked at Medium, I worked at Snapchat, and I also worked at uh, Bridgewater, or I work at Bridgewater, I guess I should say. And so I have seen a lot of teams and a lot of companies uh, and how they do things, how they do hiring, some of the good things and some of the not so good things. And I've also interviewed many candidates and I've seen a number of pitfalls. I've seen really capable people just not do well because they either didn't prepare correctly or they prepared in the wrong way. And while this isn't comprehensive, this is a pattern, this is what I follow and what I encourage people to do uh, before an interview, no matter what your seniority or your background is, but especially if you're just getting started. So with that, let's do this. Principle number one, and it's meta and it's general, but ABC always be coding. This is something that I've held pretty close throughout the last 20 years. No matter what position I'm in, if I'm a CTO or the CEO of a company, or I've been a VP or director um, and leading a team, still, I try to stay relevant. I try to code every day or at least every other day or a couple times a week because there's just so many things to learn and there's so much to do. Coding is what got us here in the first place. It's why we love doing this. And a lot of people I know, my younger brother included, went down this manager track and they just can't find time to code anymore. I don't think that needs to be that way. I think that you can find ways, especially when you have a team and your team is there to support you. You should be able to find the time to either help them or to try, you know, do experiments or spikes or try different things or code at home if you have to, but don't stop doing that. I think it's, in, it's incredibly important, not just to stay relevant, but to stay excited about what you're doing. That's just a general tip, but it's especially true when it comes to preparing for an interview. And so principle number two, you should know and be a master or an expert of at least one popular or relevant language. That might be C++, could be Java, it could be Go or Scala, Python, or even Ruby, even though I'm not a fan of Ruby, or TypeScript or JavaScript. It doesn't really matter, but you should feel like it's an extension of you. It's one of your tools that you can rely on and you're not thinking too much about syntax. You're just writing the code and you understand what the libraries are. You know how to get answers. You're very comfortable in that language. And then of course you should know one or two of the languages and be somewhat accustomed or have some cursory knowledge of them, At the very least, this is gonna help when you interview, this is gonna help you not only express yourself and be able to talk about the language that you're most familiar with, it'll demonstrate that domain knowledge, that specialized knowledge as well. But if you do have to write code on a whiteboard or you are going to you know, do pair programming, which I remember doing at Square, Google was a good example of whiteboard-like interviews where you're writing code up on the whiteboard, unfortunately. Um, you can fall back and you can use that language. And then you can also demonstrate to the interviewer that, look, you, it, this is easy to learn languages. And you, even if that company uses a different language than what you are specialized in, it's okay. You can learn and you can learn very quickly. Still, you should know and be comfortable with at least one language and consider it the thing that you are most comfortable in at this point in time. Principle number three, reinvent the wheel. And what I mean by that is when you are learning a language or you're, you're, you're just honing your skills, especially on data structures and algorithms, you should implement the things that you use every day. There's so many libraries out there that you can use that implement the most common and advanced data structures that we use. 
pick a few a few algorithms to implement, whether it's quicksort or Dijkstra's algorithm or some greedy algorithm. This is incredibly important. You should do this over and over again, and it will keep these things fresh in your mind because they will come up in your programming interview, if not explicitly, but as part of another problem. And especially if you're learning a new language, it's going to help you learn the idioms of that language and the syntax. And there's many ways to implement the same thing, many ways to implement a linked list. And it's going to vary from language to language, depending on how that language is structured and what the idioms are. So that brings us to number four, which is to solve word problems. You're probably not going to be asked, okay, you know, what's a binary search tree or implement binary search. You might, but more than likely, you're going to be asked some sort of word problem. You're going to be asked to solve the problem, you know, solve a chess game or solve Boggle or, or you know, implement Battleship or, or Flood Fill, which I have a story about, but something that's going to make you use the primitives, use the data structures or algorithms to actually get to a solution. And they're probably going to have edge cases and they're probably, you're going to, you're going to need to know how to not just use these things, but to bend them to solve a problem practice this. Before I joined Google, I spent three weeks, probably two to three hours a day, solving word problems on TopCoder, TopCoder at the time. And there's many programming contests and things you can pull problems from. But these things, they're, they're interesting because they are real problems where you're meant to use these, you know, greedy algorithms, dynamic programming, many recursion and iterative based, and there's constraints. And like, these are great great, great for getting you ready for any problem that an interview might throw your way. I can't stress this enough. Make sure you're doing your programming word problems. Number five, and this is fairly general. Don't make assumptions in an interview and ask questions early. Always clarify what the interviewer means if you're not entirely sure. You should expect to fully understand what they're asking of you. And you can even ask them, what do they expect? What does good look like, right? Get as much information as you can so that you can solve the problem directly. So many times I've seen people, I will ask a question and then they will take it back and think about it or start hand waving or writing something up. And then we realize, or I realize that maybe they're not clear on what I'm asking. And so I will jump in and try to get some clear, try to give some clarification. But if they've done that up front, you're going to save a lot of time. Interviews aren't very long. They're short. So you need to make sure that you know what's being asked of you. This is so important. It doesn't hurt to ask questions. And also when you start to get an understanding where, what they're getting at, what their approach is, you can kind of take control of the interview and give them not just a solution, but a, your good idea of what a solution might look like. That's incredibly powerful. So make sure you're clear on what the requirements or the asks are of you when you're asked a problem. And number six, and this is another general one, and it's something I call being assertive and open-minded at the same time. You should feel comfortable and be assertive in what you know, whether it's the programming language you know or your specialized knowledge. If it comes up, it's good to demonstrate that you understand it and you're an, an expert or you're, you're comfortable with it. And you can challenge an interview on, interviewer on things if, if you need to. But at the same time, you want to be open-minded. This is like a two-way conversation between two people. They are trying to gauge whether or not you would be a good fit in the company. And you're trying to gauge whether or not you want to work at the company. And so it's important that there's this back and forth where you can demonstrate your knowledge and you can assert what you're good at. But you can also learn and, and use this experience to, to learn new things, right? Think about it. Maybe this, when you're being asked a question or it's a problem, it's fun to solve, but it's also, it's a great learning experience. And so you should kind of take it that way. And you're not going to pass every interview, but you can learn from every interviewer. Be passionate, be curious, be assertive when you need to, and stay open-minded. The other thing I would say is that I've seen situations where the company wants to see someone in this hiring committee committee or hiring group or whatever it is, they want to see a champion for this candidate, right? It's one person who's like, I think we should hire this person. They're great. Like, let's go get them. And 
as long as other people are generally, yes, this person did well, they passed the bar, and maybe there's a negative one, and that's okay, but it's important to have a champion for you. I've seen times when someone just kind of passes the bar, and we still pass on them, because there wasn't anyone who's really excited about that person. And so, you know, there's not any one thing you can do with that, but be curious and be there to learn, and that will go over extremely well. So, of course, there's no silver bullet to getting hired. You're gonna fail, and you're gonna succeed. It's just a matter of putting in the effort and preparing, and most importantly, ABC, always be coding. Like this post, or share it, or subscribe. This is my first post, technically. There's so many more things I would love to talk about. Most importantly, leave a comment or reach out to me at, at David Vitao on Twitter, and I would love to hear from you to see where we can take this conversation.